In this episode, we ask the question, how do scientists sample populations of fish and invertebrates along shorelines? Hey, Josh Bernstein here. I'm in Maryland at CERC, the Smithsonian Environmental Research Center. I've come here to study coastal ecosystems. CERC sits on the Chesapeake Bay, the largest estuary in the United States where fresh water from the land meets salt water from the ocean. It is home to a complex food web of plants, fish, and invertebrates. I've arranged to meet biologist Stacy Habard to learn about nearshore populations of fish and invertebrates and how scientists monitor them. Here at CERC, we study the land-sea interface. So we measure the fish and shrimp and crab populations in the nearshore or shallow water zone. Okay. And one of the ways we do this is by seining. And anyone who does water ecology, if you said to them, hey, let's go seining, they'd know exactly what you meant. Absolutely. Shall we go seining? Absolutely, let's do it. Okay, great. Seining involves taking the rectangle-shaped net into the water. We will unfurl the net once we reach a standard distance from the shoreline. This is considered the near shore zone. And you're trained to know exactly how deep to go? I am, yes. <laughs> now what we're gonna do is we're gonna unfurl the net. I'm gonna pull it towards me. Do I unfurl or do you? We both unfurl. So I walk backwards? You can stay where you are. I'm staying I'm right gonna here. walk away and you're gonna unroll it towards you. But not moving my feet, which are sinking into the mud. Yes, try to. Uh, <laughs> okay. Try okay. to stay right where you are. A seine net has floats on top and weights on the bottom to help it stay vertical in the water. Are I'm you ready, ready to seine? I am ready. Great, let's go. Okay. Stacy and I slowly pull the seine net toward land, staying parallel to the shore. As we move, we glide the poles along the sediment. Keep the bottom of the net flush with the bottom of the river to prevent animals from escaping. So just touching the bottom, not dragging, right? Exactly. But it is getting heavier because we're pulling. It is. We're pulling all the biomass. We've definitely got some fish and probably a nice chunk of mud in there as well. Nearshore animals like the fish, crabs, eels, and shrimp that we're catching can serve as important bioindicators or living signals about the health of the water and the local food webs. On land, Stacy's colleagues join us to empty the nets into bins and then identify, measure, and catalog each animal. So this is a mummy chub, one of the most common fish on the bay. Well, okay, see? Yeah. A baby one. No, this is oh. actually a full size. Oh, really? In fact, I so think small. this is a female who has eggs. See, she's a little bit fat under her belly right here. I wasn't so. going to say anything, but she... yeah. <laughs> Okay. We this... would call her gravid, which means she has eggs. Okay. And yeah, she is one of the staple food items for a lot of larger fishes in the bay. Animals here are small and include the larvae of larger animals. They're here for protection from large predators and to find food and shelter. Can I hold them? Absolutely. And it's a her, actually. How do you know it's a her? She has eggs. Oh, look at that. All along oh, the bottom there. <laughs> there they jumped. And you are discovering that they have a very good escape mechanism. That's impressive, but I got her. These small animals are an important part of the food web, serving as food for larger fish and predators. These shrimp happen to be a favorite food of white perch and juvenile striped bass, which we also call rockfish locally, which seek refuge in the near shore zone. So without the shrimp, really, the food chain above wouldn't happen. It could easily collapse. By seining the nearshore zones of the Chesapeake Bay, scientists like Stacy and her team can look for patterns of increases or decreases in the populations of fish and invertebrates, which may signal changes in the health of the waters and the stability of the bay's food web. What I like is that seining is such a simple concept. Yes. Dragging a net through the river and counting <laughs> what you catch, mm -hmm. and yet over time it becomes a very effective tool for determining what's happening in the water. Yes. Right? It's a very powerful tool for assessing long-term change. Sometimes it gets lost that the marsh is kind of a muddy, smelly place, and a lot of the animals are very small, but this is where the action is. This is sort of the engine that's driving the productivity of the entire bay. Nearshore zones are an important part of estuaries because they're the nursery habitats of fish and invertebrates and the refuge of smaller creatures that are part of the food web. As for our original question, how do scientists sample populations of fish and invertebrates along shorelines? Seining is one way that scientists monitor these areas, looking for signals of imbalance in the populations of animals and an indication of the health of the bay. <laughs>